The Australian Ghost Whisperer, with Katerina Legato and James Jennings. Hello everyone, welcome to the Australian Ghost Whisperer, and boy do we have a hell of an episode for you this week. You are not going to believe the utter insanity <laughs> that happens in our lives. Katerina, that's a pretty fair assessment, right? It's It's been crazy. Yes, it has. Yes. Yes. To say the very least. But hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode. And thank you for coming back <laughs> to be part of our madness. Exactly. So, yeah, don't, um, James will tell you where we're going today. I will. Strap yourselves in. So, uh, what happened is Katarina and I were invited as guests onto the Jonesy and Amanda radio show a couple of weeks ago. Um, if you haven't heard about it, it's a recently big radio show um, based out of Sydney. Uh, we went on, we talked about the supernatural, and Jonesy and Amanda set a challenge for us. So Katerina, as you are probably aware, can remotely clear buildings or homes from spirits. So she can do this in person, of course, and she has done this in person, but has also got the ability to do it remotely. So um, I know Katerina likes to have photographs to sort of help her tune into the house. Do you need the photos, Kat, or are they just something that kind of help help you? Help it you does support? help to have a few photos so that I can project myself into the home. And then by doing that, I'm able to psychically sense and feel what's in the house and what's going on and what I need to do. So quite incredibly, you can clear buildings and spirits and have done so multiple times remotely, which is such an amazing gift. And... Uh, we did a, a, an episode recently um, with a guy called Nick. Uh, you'd cleared his place uh, in person. Um, but again, the remote ones is where the challenge was set from Jonesy and Amanda. So they had found someone who lived in an extremely haunted place in a New South Wales uh, coastal town called Mollymook. And they essentially gave the details of this house and that person to Katerina. And Katerina, do you want to tell us a bit about what you knew about the house and the people beforehand. What did they tell you was going on at the house? Very little, nothing. Oh, they didn't I tell had... you much what was happening? No, she sent me a few pictures and um, basically um, I tapped into it and it was extremely haunted. There was also the land was very, very cursed. There had been obviously bloodshed on the land. And um, she didn't really tell me much more except that her parents had lived in this home for many, many years and that they had never had a day's peace in that home. And I believe that she told me very little, perhaps because this, the radio station had set it up to challenge me right? as far as my house clearings go. So that was cool. That was cool. Right, right. So they didn't give you too many details, but um, now looking back, we obviously know the place was crazy haunted. So let's talk about what, you, I mean, you just mentioned a few other things, but what, what else did you see and feel was going on at the house? And what did you learn about afterwards? Because I believe that afterwards you learn a bit more about what was going on in the house. The house encased some really, really really horrific demonic energies. It went beyond just lost souls. There was like really heavy demonic presences in the house. And when I psychically went in there, I had to get out because it's like, oh, my God, and I had to up my protection, went back in there. And I still feel cold talking about it because it was so heavy. And then I could feel this creature like, like a creature, and I don't I really mean a creature, outside. And it was almost like this creature was making sure that those demons remained inside of the house. And the creature was almost holding, protecting if that's a word for a dark entity, protecting the house that no, there could no nothing from God, nothing from the light could enter. So it was 
he was a doorkeeper, if you like. Sure. And he he grounded me. He was like, <sighs> okay. And I'm giving you a very watered down version of how he grounded me. Yeah. It was so bad that again I had to get out. And I thought, okay, so then I really got myself ready the day that I decided I was going to clear it. And I obviously, thank God, have a an amazing, you know, spiritual team to help me. So I went in there and I began, you know, obviously bringing in um, a sacred fire like a tornado spat, spun it around the house. And there was screeching in the background, screeching and screaming. Then um, I had spirit holding that creature that was outside, like holding it still because it began growling at me. It was trying to penetrate the sacred space that I had created around myself to go in there and not be attacked, although I did get attacked a few times. Anyway, so I did that and I did other things that um, that I do when I go into those spaces. And, and when I finally brought it all out, when the kind of everything between the light and the sacred fire had kind of destroyed everything, this like a black smoke, and it came into my home that I was doing it from my home that day. I was in that work. And um, this black smoke, it was like it had to have its last day, came in towards me and I had to, like, come back out of that house psychically and deal with this energy that was trying to come towards me. So it was really what a freaking challenge, like, honestly. Mm. So then that was done and then the creature outside. That creature outside, well, I had to call upon all the forces of God and all the sacred a angels and upon Yeshua to deal with that creature outside. And when it left, the screaming psychically pierced my ears. I was like, I felt like it had some sort of a, like a, like a fork, you know those forks that you kind of use in your gardening, those big yeah. fork things? That's what it wanted to throw this psychic fork into my heart. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so that was that session and I was smashed. I was bloody gone from that. So I felt like everything was good there. So then... The next morning on the Thursday, I actually was at work. I went in earlier and I just wanted to bring in lots of light and healing energy into the home, around the land and around the, the parents that were living there mm -hmm. so that they could feel some sort of like I felt like they just needed to be refueled with some light. I honestly don't know how they lived there under those circumstances, but apparently the neighbour is experiencing the same things. So the 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 the, the Bernadette has said um, in her message, which I'll read to you soon and explain a little, that, you know, she was going to pass on my details to the neighbours because they need to clear. So I feel like there's something going on there probably, I think, there's a few houses with this energy going on there. Right, right, okay. So w once you sort of went in there and saw what was going on, <clears throat> excuse me, and you had some contact with Bernadette, whose parents owned the place, did she, what, first of all, what did she tell you about how it had changed the place after you'd cleared it? But also, did she admit to lots of paranormal things happening in the house once she could actually tell you and not keep any secrets anymore? Well, yeah, Leah, basically we didn't even re I don't know if we even spoke. I think we spoke on the phone, like I said, the first time, and she just said, I just asked her, I said, please send me the photos. And, you know, she had just, all she said to me was that her parents had been in this home for, for a long, long time but didn't go into any details because obviously maybe that's what the radio station told her. Mm. But when I finally finished the work, I sent her a message to ask how it was all going and how it was feeling 
And if you like, I'll read the message yes, please. to yes, everybody please. from her. Yes, please. So I basically started by asking her how everything. So she said, I did speak because Bernadette doesn't live at home with her parents. She's married with her own. So she was like the mediator between myself and her parents. And sure. she said, I did speak to my parents and they said a few weird things happened on the Wednesday afternoon early evening, doors being slammed, sounds like something was being dropped, but they couldn't find anything out of place. But that was when I was working in the house and I reckon they were slamming the cupboards. That was the Wednesday that I was doing that work. They were obviously going crazy in the house. Mm. But, but, but late night everything had settled and was quiet because obviously I'd finished that work. Mm. Mum said it was unusually quiet. Thursday morning it was like something was wrong because it was too quiet. <laughs> that was after I did the healing energy in there. It was too quiet. Right. <laughs> but yeah. they both said it felt a lot lighter, brighter and quiet. The hallway cold spot doesn't feel strange anymore. They can't hear him breathing, which isn't a him. It's a creature that was out breathing and growling outside. So they can't hear him breathing with them at night anymore. So I'd say it's definitely work. My brother-in-law said he's going there in a few weeks just to see if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. 30 years experience. He always felt the presence there. Thank you so much. I don't know how you did it, but they say it's definitely left. She hasn't spoken to her neighbours yet, but she has your name and details in the event that they want to contact, obviously, me in order to obviously get the help that they need. Um, so, yeah, basically um, we're happy to say it was a great outcome. And um, thank you so much. Amazing, amazing. And, you know, I can testify myself because I've had plenty of times where I've had supernatural or weird paranormal stuff go into my apartment and I tell you and you've remotely clicked oh. it and you just make it go away. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how you do it, but you did it. And I'm so grateful that you did because, you, I, the, honestly, Kat, it is the most astonishing gift that you can do it. And I'm sure people, you know, might be skeptical and like, oh, that's it. I'm, and I'm telling you, no, yeah, it, it is 100% legit. And it is the most incredible gift. I don't even think you acknowledge how incredible a gift it is. It's just, it's, it's like a, it's like some kind of miracle. Like it really is. From when I was um, going back from my 20s, my guides began to teach me the art of clearing houses, clearing, um, you know, paranormal, wherever there was para paranormal activity. So I was not taught by any human in this world. It was taught to me directly by by God, by my own guides, and I have my own method of doing this. And um, I, I spent many, many years with my guides being taught this gift mm -hmm. and to be able to hold my space and stay protected in whatever situation that I would confront. And, yes, some houses for me I can go there and it's like click, click, I can clear this. This is so easy. Um, and others like this one are extremely challenging. Mm. And had I, I thank God every day because had I not had that kind of training directly from above, there's no way that I could have done that. And I also think that, you know, there's no way if an inexperienced person had gone into an environment like that, professing to clear their home, mm. they would have been eaten alive. They would have stirred things up so badly to the point where I don't know how they would have come out of that. That was one of the most extreme 
hauntings that I have kind of ever come across, apart from when I did, um, what was that nightclub I did, that old night? Oh, Hellfire, the Hellfire nightclub. And that was on par with that. Wow. You know, that I nearly wanted to walk out of. So that's how I have come. And, yes, it is a miracle, and I think that the miracle lays that I have so much support and love from the other side that, like, if I did not have that, there's absolutely no way. So I'm always very clear to people that please be careful who you allow into your home, into your energy to do this type of work because if they do not know and understand the realms and how to keep everything under control, like you will unleash hell. You can literally unleash hell and hell was in that house. Hell was in that home because the veils between the dark realms and this realm, as everybody's aware of the chaos on, on, on that's going on in this world, I think it's really undeniable that, you know, the realms between hell and this world are getting finer and finer. And I feel that this is why more and more people are coming on board and wanting to heal and wanting to grow spiritually so that we can stop it from taking over. And I'm not even exaggerating it, but we are heading in a direction where if we don't turn this around, hell will take over to a point where I don't know, you know, I don't really know, but I know it, you know, the light and love always win, but I think it's really all of our responsibilities to, you know, everybody has their gift. And I always say to people, you know, if if you are not sure, if you get, you know, especially healers, I say that because I've seen a lot of healers that have come to me broken in pieces. Do not take on work that you cannot do. This is me 30 years of experience. Could I have done that 20 years ago? No freaking way. No? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back after this quick break. Hello, everyone. James and Katarina from the Australian Ghost Whisperer here. Just letting you know that we are now doing house and business clearings. We've been having a lot of inquiries, so I thought we would let you know. If you don't know what that is, Katarina, please explain. Yeah, so a house or business may be haunted or have stagnant and negative energy from previous owners. Maybe someone's put the evil eye on you or you're dealing with psychic attacks, curses or demonic interference which may cause physical and spiritual illness to you and your family members. I'd like to also let you know that I've written two books on the paranormal and I'm highly experienced in the process of cleansing and clearing these disturbing interferences and turn your place into a loving, light-filled sanctuary. Catherine is also available for healings and exorcisms if that is something you may need. And if you'd like to read some testimonials from Katarina's satisfied clients, you can do so at her website, which is katarinalegato.com.au. We also did a video recently where we cleared a house of spirits and we have a response from the very happy owner. We'll put that in the comments below so you can see a link to that. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can do so via email, which is australianghostwhisperer at gmail.com, or you can give us a call on 404 258 949 and we are based in Sydney, but we're also happy to travel interstate and we are absolutely happy to help. Happy to help and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And um, even though that sounds like that's the end of the story, it's not. Um, the neighbours. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's the neighbors. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's not just the neighbors. Um, and by the way, Jonesy and Amanda obviously picked an uh, uh, the perfect oh. place for you to clear, um, as difficult as what it was. Yeah, but it's not the end of the story. In that, Kat, you felt attacked and went through some drama after you cleared this place. So, are you happy to yeah. talk a bit about that? Yeah, I've been very attacked since that day for stepping on the grounds of that creature who was a, like I said, a, a, a keeper of the dark side. You know, so there are keepers, watchers of the dark side 
on this earth. And I don't want to say terrify people, but I really stepped on his territory. And I was viciously attacked afterwards by obviously not that creature, but other creatures that are around. So, um, you know, I was kind of um, in a bad way for a while amongst other things. So I um, I can't go into a lot of details, but then a few days after that I, I had to do a healing for somebody and I discovered something that I can't talk about um, and the dark side did not like that and so they attacked me again. Right. So I've been under an incredible psychic attack to the point that I ended up in hospital, to the point where I needed my Patreon team to send me healing so I could pick up. And I have been really and truly, I was a mess because when you step on their territory, and I guess I didn't, I don't know, maybe didn't realise what I was stepping into and not just this home, and that creature, that doorkeeper, but um, the other job that I did, that I discovered something that they don't want. They don't want people rising up and learning. and They don't. They Like I said, there is a battle on this earth, and I'm telling you there's a battle of light and darkness on this earth. And I, it's, you know, and I'm just starting to come good from all of this. Mm. What's it been, James? Uh, a, week, a week or so like you were yeah, yeah. Look, honestly you were you were a in mess. really bad shape like i was incredibly worried so bad yeah, yeah i thought i was it i they tried to kill me basically they tried to take me out i ended up in hospital with a heart rate of almost 150 and i don't have any heart conditions they were preparing to resuscitate me i was going to go into cardiac arrest and um, all in all, you know, I think I was just laying there going, okay, so if I'm going to die now, I need to just focus on God. And I was just focusing on God so much. And I did have help. I had called Julie to say, look, I'm going to hospital. Um, please send me light. So, no, she was working on me. Um, and I was calling on God. And they were about to inject me with God, I don't know, whatever, to bring my heart rate down. And then all of a sudden, it just dropped boom, like this back to normal. And the doctors are like, stop, stop, we don't need to do anything else. So I spent, you know, quite a few hours in hospital and um, they they looked at me like they were, they didn't know what to say really. They were kind of a bit confused. Mm. And so um, then I went home and i got to say, you know, the, 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 the attacks continued. And they they were not, they were definitely otherworldly attacks. And, yeah, you might say, where were my guides? I think I was just so low and wasted. But, yeah, I think my guides and God were there because I was going to die in that hospital. Yeah. That was meant to take me out. Yeah. Because I stepped on to so, mm-hmm, the house, yeah, that creature, yeah, but then I stepped into something that I discovered that they didn't like. Okay. Okay. Well, you've certainly... Uh, um, again, compared to last week, you've really rega- regained your, your strength and power and you're back in touch with your guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm not 100% yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks to my Patreon members who James kindly held an emergency meeting and, and that really helped me. And, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, like I said, I think the battle is becoming um, very, very intense of the light and the darkness is a clash and we can see it with everything that's going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. And I just say that if you are a light worker, that you look after yourself, don't run yourself, you know, into a hole. And I feel that part of why I got so viciously attacked was because I was so tired and um overworking because so many people demanding so much of my time and healings and this and that. And so, you know, me and my big heart, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And I think that had I not been so tired, I would have perhaps been able to deal with it differently. So I feel like this was another lesson of my guides had to step back and go, 
okay, Kat, you're not listening to us that you're overworking yourself, so therefore we're going to just let you fall a bit and learn your lessons. So, yes, I am going to cut back and I'm going to be training, you know, um, some some good healers to come in, step in and help because I can't take all of this on, on my own. It's just getting too much. Yeah, and that's my plan for the future. I remember um, this happening to me in my 20s where I was viciously attacked and I came back and said to my guides, how dare you let this happen to me? You let them attack me. And they said, well, you know, you hadn't really been protecting yourself too well and you want to learn to do this stuff and so there you go that's how you know I think I'm a bit stubborn and they just go okay well let's let her fall because that's the only way she listens but um yeah I'm I'm training a few people at the moment who are very good and so I'm just you know asking for people to be patient and to realize that um yeah, I'm quite not ready to die or leave this planet yet as I have things that to achieve of my own. Yeah, yeah. And what's incredible, Kat, is even after all you've been through, um, you, you're still not going to give away the remote clearings. Like you're still, you're still going to do it. Yeah, look, I'm still happy to go to house clearings. I love it. Yeah, whether I go, I'm still happy to keep doing the house clearings and go to people's homes or do them remotely. Look, I'm look, God, I'm not resigning or retiring, no. But I am going to, you know, maybe start being a little bit more true, I don't know, just more careful of who I'm going to, you know, take and, and narrowing down appointments and keeping things a little bit more balanced in my own life rather than just always working, working, helping people and not, you know, to the point where I'm not helping myself enough. And this was the lesson in all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, yeah, if, I mean, I love doing house clearings. I'm happy to do house. Yeah, clearings. I know. I've, I've I've been on a few with you, and and uh, yeah, you do you do. I mean, you know, it's obviously work, but it's it's uh, it's an enjoyable form of work. Like it's um it's interesting, and uh, you know, it's eye opening on the on the few that I've been on. It's always quite eye opening. So I'm sure <laughs> I'll be, I'll be coming along on, on future ones as well. Um. Yeah, but so if, if people are watching or listening and they are interested in getting a, a clearing, whether it's in person or remotely, is that okay? Can can we sort of like... Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, of course. I'm just saying that, you know, you know, I can't be put under this pressure of, please, my life is falling apart, come in one week. Yeah, I just need people to be a little bit more patient because people get on the phone and they're crying and they're begging and then I feel sorry and then this is what happens. I was so run down, I was so tired and I embarked on some big jobs that, you know, caused me, you know, a lot of grief. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just, yeah, all about looking after yourself while, while you do your work. Yeah. Yeah, so look, if, if people can uh, contact us at australianghostwhisperer at gmail.com. Uh, we're also on social media. It's not hard to find an email address or what have you to contact us. So if you do have some clearing work, um, yeah, cat's, cat's, cat's about. She can't be doing, you know, one every single day of the week, but uh, I'm sure that with uh, some jobs uh, we, we, we can take on. So, um, yeah, happy for me to put that out there for you, Cat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's wonderful. I mean, yeah, I love doing what I'm doing, but I'm also feeling like, I want to ask people to pray more, um, meditate more, you know, be in your hearts. It's such an important time. Um, we are at, humanity is truly at a turning point and we need to hold light, be be more godlike and hold the light frequency, the love frequency on this earth because, um, you know, we don't want what they're planning to unleash on this planet to be unleashed. Mm. And that's pretty much all I can say. 
Well, thank you for being uh, so frank with us as you always are, Kat. And um, that seems like it might be a good place to wrap it up. Unless you have anything else you want to add? No, no. So, no, I'm all good. Okay, wonderful. Well, everyone, thank you for watching and listening. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment, share, all those good things that help us get seen and um, and uh, keep things ticking along for us. So thank you. We appreciate you and we'll no doubt see you next time. Katerina, thank you so much. Thank you, James, and thank you, everybody. And please share our message, subscribe, you know, share our videos. And I'm sending lots of love out, and I hope you're sending the love out to this world also because it needs it. Absolutely. All right. Catch you next time, everyone. Bye. To gain access to private spiritual development classes, guided meditations, and live Q&As with Katerina, please visit www.patreon that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash the Australian Ghost Whisperer